Hello, Internet. I'm Joss Away, and this is Sid Meier's Civilization VI. We're going to be doing the monthly challenge for July 2024, Terra Incognita. Now, there are two difficulty uh, choices available for the monthly challenge. This month, they've actually split it up between two different leaders as well. For Prince, you have Zhao, uh, who has some sort of uh, trade route benefit. I've never played him. And then for Emperor, we have Matthias Corvinus, who has like a very domination victory centered build around leveraging city states and things like that. Uh, I usually, I'm not super great at Civ. Uh, Emperor is sort of the hardest difficulty I have ever played on, at least in successfully won a game. And I'm particularly a little bit weak on the combat side, but we're going to go for the Emperor Challenge this month. So let's take a look as we load into the challenge at what exactly the challenge is and what we can learn about our leader uh, of the Hungary civilization. It's a bit of a long loading screen. There we go. <laughs> from the barrel of muskets to flowers of fire in the sky. Even the quiet words on newly printed pages hold great changes within. The world, once so vast and mysterious, has grown smaller and more familiar. Yet, there are always questions to be answered, faiths to be tested, and national identities to be formed. All right, so it seems we're starting in, I think this is the Renaissance era with the muskets. I'm not sure, but we're probably not starting in the ancient era here. Uh, Terra Incognita, lacking both strategic materials and the luxuries your people demand, you're compelled to explore beyond the shores of your resource-poor continent. Play on Prince difficulty to benefit from Zhao III's boost to international trade or leverage city-states as Matthias Corvinus on Emperor difficulty for a real challenge. Can you reach the promised land and secure victory over leaders in the same predicament before July 16th? It's time to set sail. So uh, right off the bat, it seems like we're going to want to establish a smallish empire on our starting continent while rushing for the ability to cross the ocean and settle our uh, second continent in order to acquire luxuries and strategic resources, which are not going to be available at our start location. Uh, let's take a look at our features and abilities here. Raven King. Levied units gain an ability giving them plus two movement and plus five combat strength. That already is very, very strong. So if we levy early warrior style units, right, they gain, they go up from 20 to 25 uh, in combat strength and they gain plus two movement, which means they can move over a hill or through a forest a little bit faster. It costs 75% less gold and resources, that's important since we won't have a lot of iron early on, to upgrade levied units. If you levy troops from a city-state, receive two envoys with that city-state. Gain the Black Army unique unit when the castle technology is researched. So in addition to gaining combat units that we levy, we also gain envoys, which helps us strengthen our relationship with city-states. Uh... Black Army is a unique land unit that we get when the castle's technology is researched. And we have another unique unit, the Hussar, and a unique building, the Thermal Bath. We also have Pearl of the Danube, plus 50% uh, production to districts and buildings constructed across a river from a city center. So we definitely want to settle on one side of a city and plan our districts on the other side. Uh, we want to be able to levy city-states. So we're going to want gold. That implies uh, like harbors or, tri or, or commercial hubs. Um, we're going to have access to Black Army and Hussar, which I'll have to find out what they are, and this unique thermal bath. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Let's go ahead and dive in and look at our starting location. Okay, so... Right off the bat here, we are starting near a river. That's fantastic. Um, let's take a look at our other specialties. So we have Black Army. What is this? Hungarian unique medieval era unit that replaces the Courser. Plus three combat strength for each adjacent levied unit. Okay. So we're going to be poor on resources on this continent. We may not be able to find horses. So we might not be going straight there. But it's a medieval era... Uh... Light Cavalry is Courser, I think. Upgrades to Cavalry or Hussar. That's our other unique unit. A 
upgrades from horsemen. Yeah, it's light cavalry. Okay, so seems like the only units we actually want to build are these light cavalry units. We build the Black Army, we upgrade them to Hussar, and then for our other military needs, we levy city-state items, uh, city-state units, and upgrade them at a very reduced gold cost. Sounds good. Let's check out the Hussar. Uh, Hungarian unique industrial era unit that replaces cavalry plus three combat strength for every active alliance. So we want at least one or two friends that we can have alliances with, even though we're going for a domination victory, which means we're going to want to focus in on our Casus Belli as well to avoid generating tons and tons of grievances. Uh, let's look up the thermal bath. This is our unique building. Plus two amenities. And plus two production extends to each city center within six tiles. These bonuses apply once to a city, and multiple copies of this building within six tiles of a city center do not provide additional bonuses. Okay, so kind of like, uh, kind of like the zoo, I think. Does this replace the zoo? It does replace the zoo. So we get two amenities instead of one, and we get plus two production. But it, that production bonus goes to all cities within six tiles. That's very cool. Okay. So it requires the entertainment complex and the arena. I'm not sure about the costs here. I don't know enough about the zoo to remember whether this is cheaper or more expensive, but let's take a look here. Um, so let's double check the wording on Pearl of the Danube. Constructed across a river from a city center. Okay, so if we settle in place here... Oh, we already have a city. Oh. Oh, and we have a lot of this continent revealed already. Interesting. Okay, so where are we exactly? Uh, here's the ancient era. Here's the classical era. Yes, it looks like we've just entered the Renaissance. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'm assuming then for our civics, we're also in the Renaissance era. Medieval. Yes, we've just entered the Renaissance era. Okay. So if we take a look at our city here, what do we actually have? Uh, we have a monument and a granary, and we have ancient walls. No wonders, no trading posts, no great works. Okay, so we've got monument, granary, ancient walls. We've got seven population. We have a crossbowman to defend ourselves with, and we have two settlers. Interesting, interesting. Okay. If we settle here on the coast, we could build a harbor pretty easily. Do we have harbor tech? Uh... I think we do, right? We have shipbuilding, and there's celestial navigation. Okay. So, we'll need cartography to navigate ocean tiles. That's probably our first research. Um, so, we've got these two settlers. We've got a skirmisher. That's an upgraded scout. We've got two scouts. Okay. And let's see. We've got London's up here. Tokyo's up here. Madrid. So, we're facing off against... I guess that's Elizabeth... I haven't actually met them. Uh, Japan, that's... Uh, I can't remember his name. Madrid, that's Philip. He's going to get amazing uh, uh, trade routes. We've got Rome. Rocket at Egypt. Nidaros, that's Norway. Krakow is... Uh, what is that? Po Hung Poland? And then Niani is Nubia. And then we have the Cree down here as well. So, the first question is, do we want to settle immediately, or do we want to save these settlers and rush across the water? If we... If we... If the first thing we construct is a... Let's say we construct a... Uh, what's it called? A, uh, a campus to boost our... Because we don't have any districts. If we build a campus right away and research straight into cartography, then these guys aren't doing anything for us in the, in, the, in the short term. But as soon as we research cartography, and what would that, what would that cost us? 98 turns, okay, that's rough. But if we research cartography and rush across the water with these skirmishers and these settlers, we can get a huge head start on the second continent. Now, I'm not sure, I guess we have to go off this way to get there. We're not going to cross, cross the continent. The other alternative, looks like there's exactly one tribal village which Rakhedet's going to get. Because they must be able to see the same things as us. If we look at strategic resources on the map, 
We have some niter. There's some iron there. There are horses there. Um, <clears throat> so we don't have a lot to work with. We've got a little bit of iron we could claim if we settled a city near here. Uh, let's see. We would like to get some horses, but we might be better off just waiting until we get across the water. So there's some strategic resources on this map. If we clear this and search for luxury resources, we've got one here. Furs. There's six on the map. Nothing near us. Uh, what is that? The Kree are going to get that. Yeah, there's not a lot here. There's not a lot. Um, I've just realized something, by the way. I need to... Uh, well, so I have one cheat mod enabled. I just won't use it, I guess. That's that's the easiest way to... Uh, I, could, I could go out and disable it, but that's going to be another loading screen. So I just won't use it. Um, so the first thing I think we want to build here... Let's take a look at our tiles. We have a very nice 2-2 two -two tile there. Another one, another... we got a pair... Three 2-2 two -two tiles, basically. Uh, we've got a 2-1-2 two -two there with the copper. We have the stone. We have the... Uh, the cattle. So... I, let's see, what do I want to do here? We need to construct... I think we need to go for a campus, and it has to be across the river, which means this is the only place to do it. Now, can I place that there? I can. That's a plus two. That's across the river. There's a plus three there, but it's on the same side, so we don't get the benefit. So I think what we do is we settle one of these, one of these settlers somewhere useful to us, and we hold on to the two skirmishers and the other settler, and try and get to cartography as quick as possible. Now, what's the boost for this? Build two harbors. This is already boosted for us. So we're definitely going to research cartography. Let's set up our government here. Looks like we have access to monarchy, if we want it. Um, that gives us more influence points. Uh, housing per level of walls, diplomatic favor for everyone else as well. So we don't get anything from that. We do get more influence points, but we don't have access to any city-states yet. So I'm not sure how valuable this is to us, aside from the cards. Like, two military, one economic, one wild card, two wild, or one, one uh, diplomatic, two wild cards is very nice. It's much better than what we have over here. Alternatively, we can get plus one to all yields for the government plaza building, diplomatic quarter building, and palace in a city. Production towards wonders. Or we can get combat strength and unit experience. I almost want to go for autocracy, for the plus one yields because um, that would be that would be great for us. But the, the cards here, are so there's so many more cards. I think we have to go for monarchy. So let's set up with monarchy here. We're not going to get a lot of anything good out of this. So let's figure out what our diplomatic policy is first. Um, we don't have any envoys at city states. There are no city states on this continent. We could earn and bank influence points for envoys. And swap in Diplomatic League later. We don't need really loyalty. So I guess we go for, for Charismatic Leader here. Um, for military policies, what do we want to do here? Other civs might get adventurous, but it's going to take a while for that. So we don't need Bastions just yet. Um, heavy and Light Cavalry units would be great, but we don't have any horses. Conscription could work. What else do we have? Production towards defensive buildings. Production towards ranged and melee and anti-cavalry. Improved horses and iron resources. You one additional per turn. We don't have any of that. Combat strength when fighting barbarians. Um, naval units could be good, but we don't even have a harbor yet. Uh, gold discount upgrades would be great if we had levied units. Um... Encampment, harbor districts, and buildings for these districts. Do we want to build... I mean, we want to build a campus. So a lot of this doesn't make... doesn't do a lot for us right now. I guess we can grab an amenity and we can grab three gold per turn. Uh, so for our economic policies... Basically, we want science. We want a lot of science if we can get it. 
So what do we have here? Theater Square adjacency bonuses does nothing for us. Neither does gold from trade routes. Purchasing tiles could be good. Uh, housing, we don't have any districts. Wonders, we're not going to be building. Settlers, we don't need. Um, do we? We don't have a... We will have a governor. Established governors with at least two promotions provide plus one amenity and plus two housing could be decent. Uh, campus district adjacency bonuses I think we want. Because we're going to build a campus. And it's going to go up quick because of our Pearl the Danube bonus. Newly trained builders gain two extra actions. I think that's good. We might want a builder here. Commercial hub, production in all cities. So production helps us now. Two extra build actions helps us now if we build a builder. Campus will help us in a minute. And then we don't need great person points. Hmm. Holy site, harbor. Uh, we might want this civil, civil prestige card. But I think this is a good spread for now. Let's confirm that. Uh, we definitely want to... So the question now, the, the big question now is, do we go Builder first or Campus first? I think we want to get the Campus as quickly as possible, and we can get the Builder afterwards. So... I think we build this Campus here. We'll get a plus four adjacency bonus from our card. It'll go up quickly. We'll sacrifice the stone. Yeah, I think we go after this campus right now, and then the second thing we build is a builder. So that's going to take seven turns instead of ten. That's nice. Uh, like I said, I think we save one of our settlers and our two scouts um, to cross the water as quickly as possible. I don't see any point in scouting this continent, right? Because, like, we could go meet the other rulers, I guess... It is going to be 98 turns, so maybe maybe we will go meet the other rulers just to try to establish good relations with them. I do have some gold, so I can send them delegations and such. We know where they are already. So the question then becomes, where do we settle our second city? We're going to want a really nice uh, campus, and we're going to want a commercial hub as well. So somewhere around this confluence could be good. Somewhere like here could be really interesting, although it's too far away to protect. Uh, let's see. We'd get a really good campus here. Remi let me remind myself, if I look at campus, what are my major adjacencies for campus? Uh, it's mountain tiles, adjacent rainforest, adjacent districts, barrier reef, government plaza, geothermal fissure, reef. Okay, so do we have any geothermal fissures nearby? Oh, there's one up there. Yeah, there could be a really nice campus there. Now, it's not on the other side of a river, so we'd have to pay for it. But, um, I think I read somewhere that the thermal bath gets something from that as well. Uh... Receives plus three tours and plus two additional amenities if there's at least one geothermal official in this city's borders. Okay. So I think we want to capture, we want to capture, we want to put like a, we want to put like a, a campus there. That's going to be a plus four campus from the two mountains and the geothermal fissure, right? And then we want to build stuff along here. Hmm. What does a commercial hub here look like? You get a plus two commercial hub there. There's plenty of production in the hills. And then we could get another adjacency if we put like a, a government plaza there. If that's where we want to put it. We're building this here. So the other alternative is to put the... Well, we could probably put like a commercial hub here. Right? It's across the river. Gets plus three from adjacency there. And then we could get a lot of adjacency if we put the government plaza there, right? That goes up to plus five. So then this, well, which tile becomes... We're gonna have to buy our way to that tile to get it. But if we put the city... Where can we put the city where it's in range? We want it to be on the river and across from... Across from these, so that they go up faster. 
if we plant if we plant the city here, we get a two two tile to work at the start, and we can buy some more tiles. We can put that tile purchasing card in. There's good places along the 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 floodplains here for farms and such. And then I think we save our other settler to cross the water. I think this is all we need. So I do think... One, two, three. Yeah, this is the only place we can put it where we can get access to that tile. And then where would we put our... We want to take advantage of this in the thermal bath as well. So we probably do... Something like entertainment complex here at some point. That pushes that to plus four. <laughs> And then is that within six? That's within six tiles of this. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So we get the benefit of that. And then over here, uh, over here, we have other districts we want as well. But like, so this one's a little bit more planned out. In terms of what we build, we are going to need units eventually. So we'll probably have an encampment here somewhere. Like we maybe we have an encampment here. That that could push that up, maybe. I'm not quite sure. There's two districts, so I think we would get an additional... We'd get that up to plus three, maybe. And then, like, maybe an industrial zone around here somewhere as well. Okay. I think that's a pretty good plan. So let's have this settler head up here and settle this second city in three turns. Uh... I think, I mean, I think we just have you sleep for a while, and then with our scouts, we'll go meet our neighbors. So that's kind of our plan. I'm saving you to get across the water and settle a city on the second continent very fast, so we'll see whether that strategy pays off or not. Um, you're going to head down to meet the Cree. It's the fastest way for you to do that, like this, okay? And you are going to stay fortified here to grant us our additional amenity and protect our home city of Buddha. Looks like that's pretty much it for our first turn. Uh, we do want to appoint a governor. I think we want to go Pingala here. We want to get to Researcher ASAP so that we can research cartography and get across the ocean. So let's appoint Pingala. How many tiles do we have? Six? Let's appoint Pingala to Buddha. Okay, and then let's definitely promote him with Researcher. I don't need Curator or Space Initiative. I don't really need Grants now, but Connoisseur would help as well. Let's get Connoisseur and Researcher going. And then we don't have another city and I don't need the other promotion, so we're just going to bank the other Governor titles for now. I think that's the best I can do. Now... I could use my gold to purchase a builder, but I think I want to establish good relations with my neighbors as much as possible. And we want to save gold to... We do want to have gold to levy units once we get over to the other side. We are going to need some units here. So the other thing I could do is take this settler and settle for this, but I think we're better off saving you to cross the ocean and just get like a huge head start on the new continent. That may mean we have to fend off aggression from our neighbors, but we'll have to see about that. We'll see how quickly they settle. Um, in terms of civics... Uh, let's see. I think... Naval units... Faster growth. None of that's super important. What cards do we have? Production of spies. Trade route benefits. Uh... Religious stuff, simultaneum. So we don't need religious strength in combat. Uh, additional gold would be good, so it might be good to go for exploration. We're, we're monarchy right now. Diplomatic service. Mercantilism. Gives us improvements to camps. Improved niter and coal resources yield additional. Trade routes. Logistics could actually be really good. Well, we don't have that much territory. Uh, yeah, rationalism. We want the Enlightenment, right? Yes, I think I want this rationalism card. So let's go, let's go for the Enlightenment. Let's start there. Okay. 
Uh, we do have the ability to produce a trader. We could try to trade with one of our neighbors, but again, it's a gold investment to get that trader. And I want to send them delegations and such. Here's all the boosts and whatnot. Civic boosts. And new continent discovered. Kernerland and Pangea Ultima are the two continents we have knowledge of right now. Okay, seems like I've got my I've got my plan. We're not gonna we're not gonna use this settler, which is gonna hamper us in the early game, but because the other the other guys are gonna have three cities and a lot more production. But I feel like if we can if we can make this work and get across the ocean before anybody else, that's how we win the game. So let's find out about that. Okay, <laughs> five barbarian outposts just spawned. Uh, this one's gonna give us some problems, so let's move- let's start moving our skirmisher and our crossbowman to deal with that immediately. We'll get a little bit of gold from this. Fortunately, it's not gonna hamper our settling plans. Let's move this settler. This skirmisher can continue north to meet London. And this skirmisher needs to come around and scout the barbarians while our crossbowman moves out. So we want to stay on this side of the river in the defensible terrain and head down to try and clear that out. Six turns to the campus, 97 turns to cartography. Let's go to the next turn. All right, you keep moving this way. Uh, we're going to have you settle here. Right? Yeah. You go meet the British. We are, by the grace of God, Victoria, Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. And soon, dare I say, the Empire. All right, there's Victoria. It's an honor to meet you. We'd love to sample your hospitality. We would love to send you a delegation, which she received. And then we'd love to get open borders with you. So she wants 13 gold right now. That is a price I'm willing to pay to get good relations with her early on. Okay, so she starts out with the same combat strength as us, a little bit more science and culture. Um, now, interestingly, do we have the chance to pick a pantheon? I don't actually know how that works when you start in a renaissance like this. But having met her, we now want to move on to meet somebody else. Uh, so let's head, let's have you head up towards Tokyo next. What's the fastest way to do that? You're gonna get into the water? I guess that's fine. Okay. Uh, why don't you get up on these defensible hills? And actually, we can get an adjacent, we can get a... I'm not sure if you can get, um, support bonuses across the river. But these are hills, so we'll have... Plus six defense modifier here. Okay, so this is a... We've got a pikeman. And you have a... You have a ranged attack? Yeah, you have a ranged attack of 30 and a range of 1. Okay, so he's going to attack us, but we should survive that. We've got 20 strength. And let's see. Okay, he did come out and give us the business. Let's have you move over here. You're going to found a city. Here's some era score for us. Okay. And right away I want to buy this tile. That's that's something else we're going to be willing to use our gold for. Now, I do kind of wish... What's going to be cheaper here? If I pay 270, 270 gold to buy the tile, or... I need 495 gold to slot in the, uh, the cheaper tile card. So, I think we just eat the cost here and get started on our campus. We want as much science as quickly as possible. Now, we could slot a governor in our second city. Who's going to help us out the most with science? Magnus help us grow faster. Uh, Liang helps us... construct districts faster, which we could use to build the science. So if we stuck her in there and got zoning commissioner, that helps us build that faster. I think we'll do that, because we also know we want to get a, uh, a builder or two at some point. 
So having the ability to get extra charge by building them in Estragom might be a very good thing. Um, Alright, so let's put Liang into Estragom. And then let's promote her with Zoning Commissioner. Right? Zoning Commissioner. Now, we'll take her five tiles, or five turns to get established. But this is a 25 turn build because we only got two population. Speaking of which, which tiles are we working? The two twos? All right, that's fine. Okay. So that'll help us get our second campus up fast. Now, our skirmisher here took a big hit. But I don't want him to attack my... Well, do I want him to attack across the river? This pikeman is a lot stronger than I was prepared for, to be honest. So I could hit him and sacrifice my skirmisher to do that, because he'll probably hit him back and kill him next turn. Or I could fortify. So if I hit this guy... It only takes a little tiny bit off of him, but maybe that makes it easier for the crossman to kill, or... I get plus six defense from, from fortifying, so that puts me at 26, but he's at like... He's at 47. This is where I'm talking about I'm not that good at the game. I don't really know if I'm gonna survive if I fortify here. But this does next to nothing. We need my... We need my 40 strength crossbowmen to be doing damage. So maybe the best thing I can do is try and survive one more hit with my skirmisher here by fortifying. I'm not sure how that's going to go. All right, next turn. He did kill the guy. Now, I could clear this camp. But I think it's more important to damage him and kill this unit. Because otherwise, like, this crossbow is my only military unit. So I'm gonna hit him from here. That's 24 damage, and we'll see how that plays out. Let's get in the water over here. Uh, this might not go well. Next turn. She sends me a delegation back. Most welcome. He's gonna go back in there. Okay. So how does she feel about me? We can't declare friendship. She's neutral. No grievances. Okay. Let's hit this guy again. And then I think we can kill him next turn. Question is whether the, the camp pops another unit before we can snake it. Okay. Uh, Pingala's established here. That's helpful. Okay. That's reduced our, our the time on our cartography here. Uh, volcano becomes active. That doesn't affect us. All right. Okay. Next turn. What does this pikeman do? He's going to fortify. Okay. So there's our campus completed very quickly. And we're up to 23. We're down to 23 turns on cartography. And we're going to get this barbarian kill. Uh, so we sacrifice the skirmisher to keep the crossbowman alive. If we can clear that camp next turn, that'll be great. It'll give us some gold and era score. Um, let's keep moving... You up the coast to go and meet, uh, what's his name? Tofumune? He, he did, I, I can't remember the Japanese ruler's name, but let's go meet him if we can. Uh, once Liang gets established, this campus will be coming online a little bit faster. And as soon as it's up, we'll get another eight gold, uh, eight science per turn from that. Over here, we could build, okay, so there's three, there's three options here. One is build a builder, which improves our land. Uh, two is build a military unit. I don't think we need a military unit right now. Like this very instant. The third thing we could build is the library. Or I guess we got the library for free. Yeah, we got the library for free. So we could build the university in 23 turns. So 23 turns doesn't help us get to cartography, to cartography faster, right? We want to get to this as fast as possible. So... We're probably better off going for a builder now. Because we can improve a lot of these tiles that we're working. We can grow our population faster, get more benefits from Pingala. Have more people to send in here. I guess that's the other thing. I could dedicate one worker here. Right? So, like, we give up a 2-1 tile. And work the, work the library to gain an additional... Hold on, what does that do for our science? Uh, 21.2, 23.5. So we're getting 2.4 science from... Uh, we're getting two from the work tiles plus a benefit from, uh, from Pingala. 
That, that does lower us down to 21 turns. And then I think we, yeah, I think we work on a builder here. The alternative is to try to boost this by building these two districts. We could go after the commercial hub. Um, getting more gold per turn. We're at plus two gold per turn. That's not great. But I think, I do think we get a builder first and then maybe we'll, we'll decide whether we need a military unit, the university or the commercial hub. I think, I think we'll probably go builder commercial hub. That seems right to me. Uh, looks like we could get a pikeman for 21 turns. Yeah, we just, we, we need it. We need a builder right now. So six turns for a builder seems reasonable. Yeah, we discovered Pangea ultimate. Okay. All right, I think that's fine. Let's go to the next turn. Some moderate flooding on the Danube. Okay, we didn't spawn another unit, so we can claim the camp. Okay, there's 60 gold. Very nice. So we're traveling up the, the coastline to meet our Japanese friends. We've cleared this. I guess we I guess we don't get Ariscor for clearing that. Which is too bad. We're going to want to move you back in to... I don't really want to scout with you. Let's look at the land here. Yeah, I. it's going to be tough to scout with you. I could go down and meet the Kree and then double back. Since we lost that skirmisher, I might need to do that. I am leery of leaving both my cities undefended. Plus we get an amenity from having you parked in there. Uh, well, maybe it's okay to kind of take my time meeting folks. We'll just have this scout make his way around the whole continent and meet everyone slowly. I think I'm going to bring you back and perk you in the capital. So let's go to the next turn. Uh, we did get, okay, there's another barb over there. Uh, Liang is established. Okay, so that's going to cut down on the time to build our second campus. Uh, Bristol here is soaking up a lot of valuable real estate that we need for Estragom. So she bought this tile across the river, the 2-2 tile there. Um, yeah, we need these hills, but maybe, eh, well... I mean, we're going to get all of these without struggling too hard. So I don't think I need to buy tiles there. Let's get you back home. Let's go meet the Japanese. Okay, Tokugawa Ieyasu. Uh, it's not the guy that I thought it was. Uh, it's not the original uh, Japanese... Uh, leader. I have never met this guy. I don't know anything about him, but it's an honor to meet you. Love to sample your hospitality. You seem like a warlike guy, so I definitely want to get on your good side. Let's send you a delegation. Your delegation has visited the floating world and returned with minds full of dreams. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do an open borders deal if we can. He wants 13 gold for now. That's fine. Okay. So, I won't send delegations to everyone, but my neighbor, nearest neighbors, I feel like I have to. Um, what's everybody doing? Yeah, you've, you, you've used all your all three of your starting settlers. Madrid's holding on to one. Looks like Rome is holding on to one, or is, or is moving further afield. Poland has settled three. These guys have two each. So, I, I guess they're spreading out with their other settlers. We're only on turn nine here. So, they're being ambitious. I don't know if this was the right call to hold this settler here. To have it ready to cross the ocean. Because there's a lot of value we could get out of it early, right? But... Yeah, we t I, I just... I feel like... We're going to have cartography in like 10 turns. And then straight across the ocean you go. And they're not going to be across the ocean that fast, I don't think. So we'll have to see. It's, it's a gamble that I'm making. Next turn. Okay, another... Barb outpost, not near us. That's fantastic. 
Um, you can cross through and go meet Spain. What's, what's the way I want to do this? I don't want to go underneath this, so we want to go across the coast. Let's have you come, like, over here to start. That skirmisher should be fine. Okay. Almost got our builder here. 16 turns to our second campus. I'd love to get that going faster. I wonder if there's a way to do that. Like, if I bought this tile, I could get three production. But you're gonna... You're, six turns, you're gonna get a third population. I could send this builder up here, or I could straight up buy a builder for 300 gold. No, our, our, our gold per turn is very low. I could send someone up here. What tile would I improve? There's a one food, three production there that it's going to get. So I could come up here with the builder and get more food to grow more quickly, or I could keep it down here and improve some of the tiles we're working down here. You know, we've got seven population here. It's probably a better play to use the builder here. I do wish there was something I could do. I guess I could chop. Like... This plains rainforest, I could chop this for food and production. Um... A chop might be good. These hills? You know what? It might... Yeah, it might be worth it to chop these hills and place a mine here. Because that gets us food and production, and our, our, our population is so low that the food will pop it up to three. That gets us more people working tiles more quickly, so we build the, the campus more quickly. I do think that's a valuable idea to chop that jungle. Get a little bit of, of, of production from it and a little bit of food. So that's two, two of my build charges are reserved there, I think, once this guy spawns. Another new barb camp. Okay, they're mostly not spawning near us. I don't know if that's good or not. It feels lucky. Mm. We send you a representation of all the goods of Edo. Silver, steel, our artists' woodcuts. And some mochi for later. Your delegation is most welcome. Okay, next turn again. You're going to fortify here to gain us uh, a... What's it called? An amenity? Okay, we've got a five charge builder here. So now we have to decide what to do with them. We also have to decide what to build next. So, I think we're so hurting for gold and building districts across the river is so cheap for us that I think we go commercial hub next. I would like a harbor here eventually as well. Just to generate as much gold as possible. But for starters, let's get this commercial hub going. And then for our builder, what do we want the most here? We've got 14 housing, so food helps us. Production obviously helps us. Gold would help us. You know what? We're working. I like working this copper tile. I could chop here and mine as well. So if I go chop mine, mine, that's three charges. And then I can head up north and chop mine here to help hurry up this campus. I think that's a play. I think that's a good play. Please accept my warmest thanks for your kind endeavors on the continent we share. Yeah, I think she's happy because we killed that one barb camp. That's fine. All right, let's do a chop. That takes our, our, our district, our, our new commercial hub, down to one turn. That's fantastic. Um, our skirmisher here has crossed the river. Let's go meet Madrid. No somos Felipe, rey de España y Portugal. Empero, por encima de todo, somos fieles devotos de la única y verdadera religión. Okay. He's the Duke of Sp He's the King of Spain, Portugal, Sardinia, and Sicily, Naples, Duke of Milan, etc. But most importantly, I'm a devout follower of the one true religion. I hope for your sake you are as well. Don't care about religion that much in this game. It's an honor to meet you. You're close to me, so I'd like to send you a delegation. Oh, she's friendly. Let's see if we can declare friendship. Yes. That's one AI who will not attack us. Let's send you a delegation. And let's make a deal for open borders. 
He wants 13 gold right now. Very nice. Okay. He's got horses that he's going to be selling around. That's fine. But with open borders, we can now cross through uh, to the water and go over and meet Rome. And then circle back around through Egypt, Poland. Uh, there's Norway and Nubia down here. And then the Cree. Cree are my close neighbors, but they don't seem particularly warlike as far as I can tell. We'll have to see about that. Uh, we got a little bit of... Error score for meeting them. Okay, next turn. I am Poundmaker, and I represent the Cree. May there always be peace between us. That's nice. We don't have to go meet him. He came and met us himself. Let's send him a delegation. Running out of gold here, but we did just complete our uh, commercial hub. Let's make a deal for open borders. How are we doing on gold? We're, we're running pretty low. We've got 80 gold left. Okay, but we did complete our commercial hub, so that's good. Uh, that's getting us another three gold per turn. So you, go ahead and build this mine. So plus two production there. Very nice. Uh, we want to get over and into the water to bypass these mountains. And then down here, what do we build next? We have the ability to build another district across the water if we want, like our encampment. That would protect us pretty well from the south. And Elizabeth's not going to attack us. Like, they'd either have to beat my encampment to come pillage my two important districts, or they'd have to come through this mountain pass or come up around the volcano where they have to face two cities. So an encampment could be good. Um, it also gets us some additional production here in Buddha. And we are going to want an encampment on this uh, continent eventually, because eventually we're going to have to, we're going to have to uh, for domination game, we're going to have to take all of these, all of these capitals, right? So we want to get over to the new world to get wealth and, and resources and uh, luxuries to power our economy back home. I think we will get a third city here eventually, but we'll build it after we send this settler across the water. So I do think... So it's either I get a market for another two gold per turn, which admittedly is very attractive. Or we throw down uh, the encampment, which I believe would give us an additional district adjacency on our... Or would it? Hold on. Um, what are we getting from the districts? We're already getting plus four from the district. So... Or from the from the science. So we're already getting plus one from the, hold on. What are the, what do these come from? If I re-add the thing here, it can, it'll tell me. Plus one from the mountain, plus one from the adjacent districts. So I'm getting four. And that's doubled. Right, because I've got the library. So I get two from the campus and two from uh, the library. I don't know that what building... I don't know that building... Yeah, we wouldn't get anything extra on this, but we might get something extra on the commercial hub. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I think uh, five gold per turn is not a lot. I'm torn between the market and the encampment here. I think the additional, constr the, the additional production from the encampment kind of gives it the edge here. Let's go for the encampment. Oh, I can't, I can't down, I don't have the tile. All right, well, mark it, it is then. Uh, we'll get this tile in one turn. Okay, so we can put one turn into the market and then build that next turn. Let me put this here so I don't forget because uh, I'm already running late on this episode. Uh, we need more amenities, error score for meeting the Cree. Okay. So, I think that's where I gotta call it. Uh, you guys know my strategy now. The Cree shouldn't expand up here too quickly. I should have time to build another settler and get a third city on this iron later. But we're 11 turns from cartography. We might get a little boost to that when this campus completes. Um, we, you know, we've got our first commercial hub up. We've got, a, we've got our two, two governors. We kinda, we've got our plan, right? 
We're going to get across the water faster than anybody else and exploit the second continent faster than anybody else. We're just going to, we're going to spam out settlers over there. That's the goal. And uh, we'll see if that pays off in the future. For now, we're going to call it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode and my planning and my strategy. I'm very curious what you guys think about my idea here. Do you think this is going to work or was I a fool not to settle a third city immediately? Very curious. Let me know what you think in the comments below the video. And other than that, uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.